Hey guys, it's Jet888. Today here it's 511, May 11. And what's going on today at the uh, borders and the United States borders? At least they're not being starved. Um, this, according to San Diego Union Tribune, it says Title 42 ends today. Here's what's happening at the San Diego Tijuana border. And remember, it's from San Diego Union Tribune. Well, they're not starving. Nobody here seems like they're starving. Look at that. Look at those thighs. Huh, interesting. Very interesting. Um, look at this. Let's see. Two. Someone's on their cell phone. I wanted to show you something. So this states, Title 42 allowed for asylum seekers and other migrants to be quickly expelled out of the United States without being able to request protection during the pandemic. That's weird. Um, okay, May 11th. So at 8.59 p.m. tonight, a major policy that fundamentally changed migrant processing at the border will end. Oh, so they're going to wait till it's dark before they release the um, open the gates, I guess. They're waiting till almost 9 o'clock. 9 p.m. tonight. Why at 8.59? Well, that's pretty fitting because Satan's energy and digitiza digitalization is both 8.59 and there's 8.88 and 1.48. And I'll tell you why I am looking at the Satan's energy. Because just today I was asking what is a genome and it says the genome is the entire set of DNA instructions found in a cell. In humans, the genome consists of nucleotide sequences of DNA or RNA. So just for fun, I looked up the definition of genome, or not definition, sorry, I looked up, let's see, the anagram for genome. I came up with a few. One is one gem. Remember during the Super Bowl or Superb Owl this last year, Rihanna, she sung the word, um, the song Diamonds. Diamonds seem to be a big thing. They wanted to cover that. Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Interesting also how the diamonds were the 2023 Oscars big jewelry winner. They um, cover that a lot. Best jewelry at 2023. Diamonds, diamonds, red carpet, the Oscars, diamonds. On Diamond Rocks, it says 2023 Oscar Jewelry Diamonds Shine Bright yet again. They certainly stole the show. So Genome and One Gym could be looked at. We've got Genome and Ego Men. You know all those people who are trying to um, change what life is. Real quickly, a genetically modified organism, GMO, is an animal, plant, or microbe, you're an animal by the way, whose DNA has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. And I don't think we're talking about the natural way to genetically modify things. Like if you take a chicken and you like certain traits of another, you breed them, you do it naturally. This is not a natural thing that we've been seeing lately. Would that ring a bell? Well, why won't my phone? See, look at that. It's really weird. My phone hates it when I get talk about controversial top topics. The next anagram for genome is GE Omen, as in General Electric. Here's just a few articles real quick. A solar star is born. GE and BlackRock form new solar powerhouse. This is July 17th, 2019, before the whole Needlecraft adventure began. Even on BlackRock site, they talk about investment stewardship vote bulletin, General Electric Company, so they're working with them. In the conversation, it just says these three firms own corporate America, the conversion. So the three companies are BlackRock. General Electric and Coca-Cola. Here's just one image. There's your Super Bowl. You've got McDonald's, Apple, Coca-Cola, Budweiser. 
So this was a logo associated with the 48th Super Bowl. That's the 48th XLV111. Well, there's your Pepsi, so it's not not Coca-Cola, it's Pepsi. There's their speakers, and I think it was really interesting because, because it was played in New Jersey, but yet they show the Empire State Building. Isn't that weird? In the Seattle building. But look, Denver Broncos. It was Denver Broncos versus Seattle Seahawks. And down here it says New York, New Jersey. So February, that's 22. 22 is one of their favorite numbers. But New York is not New Jersey. And New Jersey is not New York. And the Empire State Building is in New York. So why are they riding on the coattails of New York, I wonder? So look, Empire State Building, it's in New York. 20 West 34th Street, New York. Here's Pepsi. By the way, Pepsi, the anagram is Pipes. Pepsi is owned by Pepsi Company, the holding company which owns many brands spanning from um, food and um, snacks. Let's go down here. Pepsi Company is primarily owned by institutional investors like the Vanguard Group and BlackRock. Do you find it interesting that the Pepsi logo looks very similar to the Grateful Dead logo? So this is IZZE Beverage Company, a subsidiary of Pepsi Company. And here the Stroth Brewing Company was a beer brewery in Detroit, Michigan, but it's also, look at that, recruited managers from companies such as Procter & Gamble and Pepsi. What would a um, brewing company want to do with a pharmaceutical company? So here's the Coca-Cola Company, Berkshire Hathaway. We know who that is. That's Warren Buffett, like Warren Buffet, the Vanguard Group, and BlackRock. So there's your company owners. And here's Pepsi. Again, Pepsi is primarily owned by institutional investors like Vanguard and BlackRock. They're all owned by the same people. And these are some images I showed many, many months ago regarding the Super Bowl with the ball on top and the uh, cell towers. And also here they had the blimp, the Goodyear blimp was also on the top of the Empire State Building. Anyhow, when I talk about General Electric and Coca-Cola, they're all owned by the same people. Here's a December 5th, 2022 article real quick. Five companies owned by General Electric. It's the healthcare, power, aviation. Ever see those things up in the sky that leave long trails of whatever, God knows what, metallic toxins and oxides and renewable energy. That could be you. So it was founded by Thomas, let me go back, the General Electric Company, GE, it was founded by Thomas Edison in 1892. Just a real quick look at that. 1892, you break that up to 9-11. That's where I got that one, that one gem, which goes back to genome. Down below it says, but GE produces more than just electrical machinery and company. And the company was once a major player in the world of banking, plastics, Remember Ohio with the polyvinyl released? And look at the M. They always have to show their M in the background because that's 007, which is also goo. Um, 007 is goo. You turn it upside down backwards. 007 is also the James Bond, and M stands for M16. Here's in this museum. Isn't that interesting? CIA Felix Leiter. Leiter? is a fictional CIA agent created by Ian whoever, let's see, a fictional CIA agent created by Ian Fleming in the James Bond series and novels and films. Um, leader works for the CIA and assists Bond in M16. And look at this. And here they're talking about M16, the home of James Bond, 007, Greg Beam, David Harbour, Quantum of Solace, Discharge, look at this, wait, so while 007 and Beam never formally meet, the CIA agent is first involved in the Quantum of Solace, but when you look at the word Beam, and it says M is directed to Beam, 
So there's your M in Ohio's um, train wreck there with the poly, the, the, the plastics. So there's Empire State Building doing the beam light. Remember, GE owns the x-rays also. So today, May 11th, 2023, that's Thursday, green in partnership with City Harvest in honor of the Share Lunch Fight Hunger Campaign. Because the Empire State um, just shows their themes for the day. They do it almost every day. So green, how appropriate. So I'm going to just jump back real quick to the Title 42 that I was coming covering in the very beginning. Why at 8.59 p.m. tonight? Why that time? A major policy that fundamentally changed migrant processing at the border will end. Why that time? 8.59. Well, first of all, on 511, 511-666-111, this is 511, the word slaughter. Few more children of the corn X marks, as in the spot. Five eleven is also slay and go right down castle guard. Castle Corona, they kind of seem like the same type of theme, and the word consequence also, as in either truth or I guess it's consequence. So here are just a few things calculating this gematria eight five nine. Here's one thing, praise God and hell Trump, 859. It's also traitorous. And here's our Satan's energy again. Here's the Phoenix Rises. I'm going to go look at 958, just see if they flip something. And before we go, though, here's civil. Civil death is 859 and also 93, which is like Thelema, like the Aleister Crowley. Okay, so interesting. I'll flip the um, the eight five nine. I wanted to flip it around because oftentimes they do flip things around. So we're looking at nine five eight, nine five eight. Who? As in the who? As in World Economic Forum. New Age is nine five eight three three zero and fifty five. I'm doing a video right now. I'm trying to edit and just get through, but this took precedence today. And this would be us, the David and Goliath story. And 511 is also army. President death is also 888, and that's Trump's number. So let's go look at that real quick. See, here's 888 and 148. That's John D. J. Trump. And look, this these numbers here align with another thing I was looking at earlier today. This isn't it yet, but 888, 148, one more thing. Finished cross. This is part of the 511. So when I was looking at the word genome and it came to one gem, I just wanted to look at that real quickly, you know, um, going all the way down here. Where am I? So I looked at Jim. I see the diamond there where TA teams work. I didn't look at that yet. So I saw this one. It's data driven talent engagement and CRM software. Jim It's Jim.com talks about the modern recruiting CRM recruiting I wonder if all those people coming across the border are being recruited in some way or another who knows recruiting automation and efficiency it's also proactive pipeline building and full funnel reporting and analysis and look at the um, the figure eight or the Ouroboros which I was covering in a previous video that I haven't posted yet and also the little butterfly look like a monarch. So Jim at Jim.com also is applicant tracking system. Here are a lot of the companies that they work with. Smart recruiters, Lever, the greenhouse. Remember the um, Empire State Building having the green theme today? And here are their sponsors, United Health Group, Beijing, down below Gene, as in Genome, there's Jane Street. That's the one I did look at. Robin Hood, Sintas, there's your circle for your Ouroboros thing. There's Harvard, McDonald's, Google Fiber, as in Goo Gel. Anyhow, it just keeps going. That's pretty much, look, that's like a cloud logo. I just went real quick, and I just happened to pick Jane Street. That was the first company I looked at.
So here's their logo, Jane Street. Looks like it's an unfinished Target. Home, Jane Street. Our traders and researchers work hand in hand, blending our quantitative and qualitative understanding of the world's financial markets. Our technology teams build critical systems through which billions of dollars worth of transactions flow every day. Our infrastructure teams form the backbone of Jane Street. Remember, build back better, backbone of Jane Street. So Jane Street is a major north-south thoroughfare in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It, belong, it begins at Bloor Street, continues north, North Region, Davis Drive in King Township. you got to have the King, Corona, Crown, all that stuff. Here's the picture I thought was really weird. Solving the puzzle of global markets. Jane Street is a research-driven, you know, we're all under experiment right now you know, with the whole needle crafting, but it's a research driven trading firm where curious people like researchers, mad scientists work together on deep problems as in deep state. And she is on the picture, almost every picture of Jane street.com. And look at this. She's smiling, but look at what that, that graph is doing. It could be the stock market. And look at that. Looks like it's plunging, but she's smiling. So under there, who we are, established in 2000, evolving ever since, we were founded by a small group of traders and technologists. That's where our palm's gonna lie, in a tiny New York office. We trade a broad range of, range of asset classes on more than 200 venues in 45 countries. We innovate in tech, from functional programming to programmable hardware. So look at this. I just looked at asset classes. Look at that A set as in set like the lemma. Um, set is that Setians? That's another funky kind of um, Luciferian type of religion. And Klaus, like Klaus Schwab. I just thought that was sort of weird. So a group of investments that exhibit similar characteristics and are subject to the same laws and regulations. Humans are subject to the same laws and regulations, aren't we? So back to Jane Street on who we are. And it talks about um, from functional programming to programmable hardware. And I looked at the word also commodities, which was really interesting, but... Um, well, let me just go real quick. So commodities is also a mistimed coup, which it could be a play on the words, but a coup is also a chief operating officer or chief operations officer. And remember, Moderna had operating systems, but the programmable hardware was interesting too. I looked at that real quick. And when you look at computable hardware, or sorry, yeah, computer hardware, it includes the physical parts of a computer such as the case central processing unit, union, sorry, unit, random access memory, monitor, mouse, keyboard, computer data, storage, graphics card, sound card, speakers, and motherboard. Also, so I'm looking at keyboard, speakers. Remember also, I wonder if the SIM card plays in that, but anyhow, I'll go back to look at something else. So your computer hardware, also the central processing unit, what would you consider on you what the central processing unit is? It's probably your brain, you think? Okay, I hope this isn't too boring, but I also looked at the word commodities, and when I broke it down and looked at the anagram, commodities is 2SIM Medico, and well, OMS, let's see, I said OMS on one of my things, but OMS stands for Order management systems which helps brands retailers with post-purchase procedures to for multiple sales channels and OMS or OM is order of merit um, commodity is also IT's medico OM and the OM is order of merit so looking at IT's medico OM out of the anagrammed word commodities IT's medico and the word 
um, medico is physician or medical student, but the meaning of medico is physician. And the order of merit, an order conferred on civilians and servicemen for eminence in any field. Order of merit, an order conferred on civilians and servicemen for eminence in any field. And the word conferred equals a grant or bestow a title, degree, benefit, or right. Moves were made to confer an honorary degree on her and confer. So grant or bestow a title, degree, benefit, or right. Certain people have more benefits and rights, it seems like, than other people. And going back, so commodities, IT's Medico OM, an OM is order of merit, an order conferred on civilians and servicemen for eminence in any field. And I'm looking at the word eminence now. Fame or recognized superiority, especially within a particular sphere or position, uh, profession. Remember, like, trust the science and trust the experts. So IT's medical OM tells me it's IT's medical order of merit kind of shows me that IT's, the way they want the medical um, establishment to pretty much take control of everything, like the needle crafting agenda, um, they're going to do it. And another anagram with commodities to Sim Medico. And Sim is, what is that, subscriber identity or subscriber identification module. A removable card inside a cell phone that stores data unique to the user as an identification number. It looks like um, the whole digital tracking thing going on. And remember, May 1st, May Day is when Sprint T-Mobile, they um, upgraded their system. So you had to put a SIM card in your phone. Otherwise, your phone was going to be unoperable. And I saw that. My phone wouldn't work. No calls could come in or out. So just real quick, I want to look at the word SIM kit because SIM is part of this whole decoding thing. As in to SIM medico. So SIM kit is 248 and shot is 248. So that could be the needle craft shot or the 511 slaughter that goes with the president death, so who knows? I wonder what the um, president, like if, if someone was going to be assassinated, who would it be? Would it be Biden or Trump? This is just one thing I saw on Trump today. This says Donald Trump seen in town hall. What did he say? So ex-president Trump's participation in the public forum came as he turns is focused to a potential 2024 election run. So it looks like he wants to run the election. Look at the grid system on that map. Part of this article, I'll just link this. I haven't read all this yet. I'm just looking real quickly. This is karma and it won't help Trump win 2024. That's interesting. Scapegoats or Trump's army. Proud Boys trial closing arguments. I have not watched that. What's next for Trump after E. Jean Carroll verdict? So Trump's speaking basically about warning of a catastrophic repercussions for global for the global economy and if Washington defaults, it says he has to do um, massive spending cuts and he says we might as well do it now because you'll do it later because we have to save this country. Our country is being destroyed by stupid people, very stupid people. He's got that right. It's really psychological more than anything else and it could be really bad it could be maybe nothing maybe it's a bad week or a bad day who knows trump said part of the story was this e jean carroll i haven't even followed this supposedly she again has some sexual abuse thing you know me too that whole thing there's a 1996 date a lot of nines and sixes anyhow i just thought it was interesting i just wanted to go look at her name I know this could be really a stretch, but just Corona gel era, like gel, like Google and goo gel. 
they play on words and everything. It could also be the corona gel. It could be it could be playing with the words like that, gel, that kind of gel. That could be the corona gel era, like a re-education camp. And the goo goo gel, the goo Google, yeah, Google goo gel could be a gel as in more like censorship or where they only let you see what their narrative is. Either way, it's a trap or a toxin, I don't know which, a trap or a poison, either way, it's not good for you. And so some uh, in this, uh, the verdict and all this stuff, it talks about at least one photograph has surfaced of them, that lady, um, Carol and Trump together. And what's really funny is, you know what, with all the digital manipulation today, you can believe what you see. I don't think so. And they talk about treatment of women. Yeah, right. What do you call a treatment of women when you allow a, a man who identifies as a woman who still has his sexual organs intact to be labeled as um, woman of the year many times not just once many times what kind of treatment of women is that isn't that funny um usa today has michael um i mean michelle obama on the top of their little women of the year pyramid wow back to back to what i was talking about though Okay, so back to the Tijuana border here um, with the starving people. Yep, they're starving. And um, look at, just look at all the trash. I mean, is this what America is going to end up being even worse than it already is? And this is part of the social, the engineering, social engineering and the kind of propaganda thing. Here's some people getting ready. Look, they're all men military age looking there's one woman the one woman there has the mask on there's a one another woman in the background there um so anyhow they show all of these people supposedly in line waiting to get signed up and there's the pharmacy in the background you've got to have the pharmacy there you've got to have their props another psychological uh social engineering thing here look at this is that a man or a woman they are they're ordering fast food through the fence and it's being delivered. But isn't this interesting? To me, that looks like a man. But maybe it's a woman with one eye, of course. And what's funny, look at those fingernails. I'm telling you, I can't get out the door um, and spend two hours in the yard and have fingernails. Not even that I even try to have the, the white tipped claws. So she's, or he, I don't know, um, handing... This guy, this delivery, he's delivering food. Look, this is the thing. It says, a delivery driver with Ray, Ray Del Pollo. So, of course, there's that Ray again. Um, takes, or Beam, I guess I should say, Beam. Takes food orders from migrants who are waiting between the border walls on Wednesday. Yep, so they've got American money. Where'd they get that? And their nails are done, like... I mean, who does, like, who would um, survive a trip that long, unless, of course, they were driven or flown up first class or on a bus or whatever to order money, but, and then look at this person waiting in line has American money also. Where'd they get that? If you're coming up from a country, where do you get the American money? Maybe they exchanged it. Maybe they're smarter than me there. So, but look at those nails. What do you think about that? Here's some nails that, that's, that's what they probably should look if you did some real, real work. There's Andrew Jackson, right? And isn't that funny? Because look what this says about Andrew Jackson. Andrew da Jackson has appeared on the $20 bill since the series of 1928. The placement of Jackson on the $20 bill is considered ironic. Hang on. I just got a phone call. That kind of interrupted there. But so it's considered ironic. As president, he vehemently opposed to both the National Bank and use of paper money. Huh. So look at this. President Andrew Jackson was a hard money man. He liked the gold and silver as real money and considered paper money a suspicious store of value fabricated by corrupt bankers. So Jackson issued a decree that purchases of government land could only be made with gold and silver. So you can look at this um, 
picture here, either predictive programming or, I mean, why did this peep up so much cash and it's just for fast food. And there are stores in Tijuana. I've been there. They're, they could walk very easily to some local stores and they don't have to order from um, U.S. This looks like a U.S. delivery driver with Ray de, Del Pollo. So that's interesting. Why are they sticking their hands? But then that must be on this side of the border because El Rey Del Pollo is Tijuana. They're already in Mexico. So if Rey Del Pollo, that's, is it Ray of the Sun or something? I mean, I have chicken, chickens, whatever. I'll have to look that up. But something to do with chickens because Pollo of, of the chicken. Um, so this delivery driver is on the Tijuana side. And notice the flame too in the back of his um, little scarf, but <clears throat> he's on the Tijuana side and those people are reaching their hands through to his side, which is the Tijuana side. So they must be on the California side already. So that would explain their money, but why are they calling someone from Tijuana to deliver through the fences to America? They're already over here. That's where, look at all this feet. They're already over here in America. That's what that looks like. I'll send you the link. So, and from this perspective, the San Diego Union Tribune, they are on the United States side also. So this is totally backwards. This, this looks like the, um, the Pollo guy is coming from the United States going to Mexico. It's not. So this Ray Del Pollo, who they are serving through the fence, making it look like they're coming from the United States. I don't get, I don't really get what we're seeing, but every single Ray Del Pollo is on that side of the border. The south side is down towards the bottom of the um, image there. And Ray Del Pollo is Chicken King. Isn't that interesting? Chicken King. And I looked, there is an Uber Eats in Mexico. There is. So the story covering Uber Eats is funny because Uber Eats, the anagram can either be berate us, uh, which these migrants um, might be used to be berated, but berate us or a sure bet. So like if there's um, an election coming up soon in the United States, you think that those people coming over here will remember that it was a Democratic uh, president that let them in i don't know just kind of wondering because they probably still think that a bet a vote is um that they still have a say when it comes to voting i just want to share this real quickly at wola.org i'll leave the link 10 things to know about the end of title 42 they probably had ai write it because it's very extensive but number nine here, it says, instead of limiting asylum access, the Biden administration could be managing historic improvements. I'm going to go down here and in bold, it says not all asylum seekers qualify for it, but those who do are far, far more common than needles in haystacks. Got to get the needles word in there for needle crafting. So it basically says 52% of U.S. immigration judges' asylum decision in fiscal 2022 were grants of asylum or other relief. And then this article has got a lot of, a lot of graphs. I'm going to just leave it to you because it's very extensive. <laughs> Let's see, number seven, still it will be at least somewhat easier to seek asylum at the border than during the Title 42 scrolling in the phone call let's see what's this something about a phone call it says here this is probably not legal you think anything the government's been doing lately has been illegal so okay here's another little web of webs i mean really this this is um exhausting more so than my videos even Migrant encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border. That's 160,000 is one of the numbers there. Over 160,000. March 23rd. 
Okay, anyhow, here's another graph. Look, this is during the Title 42 era. That's during the era. And this is U.S.-Mexico Border Patrol Migrant Encounters. So it even, it increased during the Title 42 where they basically shut down the borders. And for expiration dates here, this says CDC's Title 42 order was set to expire May 23rd. So CDC gets um, to order political things. And this says here, May 20, that was, I guess that was 2022, the CDC. There's the graph and May 11th, which is today. And here are all the countries that are coming in. Anyhow, this is an interesting look. So the gray there, the gray is other countries, other countries. And I don't see China anywhere here, probably because China can't even get out. So who knows? But um, I don't see Africa either. So anyhow, other countries, they're not going to tell you who this huge number is. 220 thousand of course there's your 22 even over 22 anyhow i'm boring you guys but another graph another graph lots of graphs to look at but i'll leave this link for you guys but here's the code of federal regulations the regarding title 42 and it is about the public health all public health. All these chapters of public health. So ECFR content. So I said, what is um, ECFR? It says code of regulation. So where does the E come in? And of course, it's the electronic code of federal regulations. You remember when I think I posted it? I'm not sure. Maybe not yet. Um, John Podesta and Elon Musk a few months ago met at the White House to talk about the electrification of the United States. So maybe that has something to do with the electronic code. But it says it's not an official legal edition of the CFR. So it's not an illegal edition. And it gives other things that ECFR may refer to and one down here is European Council for Fatwa Fatwa and Research huh it's a private foundation composed of Islamic clerics and scholars but that's funny because when I think sometimes of Capitol Hill so Fatwa I think I'm pronouncing I'm not sure for sure Fatwa a Fatwa is a legal ruling on a point of Islamic law Sharia given by qualified I don't know what that is a uh, fatwa jurist in response to a question posed by something. Oh, history of responses in Judaism. You can look up fatwa if you need more, called a muf mufti. Jeez. So it's an is a formal ruling or interpretation on a point of Islamic law given by a qualified legal scholar. Remember the. Um, Remember under the word commodities here, and it's under order of merit. An order conferred on civilians. Let's see, conferred, if it's a grant, a title, benefit, or right, a grant or a title, like the experts. But when I look at the word Capitol Hill, it's all IT caliph. And a caliph is Arabic for successor, Islamic history of the ruler of the Muslim community. Maybe that's why they started us wearing our masks so we could just get used to the face coverings. So all information technology caliph. And you can look further into this, but every president of the United States for the last, I don't know how many, I can't remember since Eisenhower, I think, has signed the Noahide laws they sugarcoat it and they call it education and sharing day usa is what they call it one of the leading global advocates for the advancements of education do you know that um bill what's his last name 
Gates, his father was his father, his grandfather, his father, I think, um, worked with the State Board of Education trying to work on the educational system. Hmm. And here is the UN.org, United in the United Nations with seven Noahide laws, and they're all part of the World Economic Forum and the WHO. Here's the Education Sharing Day. There he is signing those Noahide laws. Look how happy they all are. Mm-hmm. There you go. Thanks, Trump. And I've covered this before, and what I thought was really funny is that um, they were basically saying that this was, they were using one of these guys as the Noahide dudes, um, one of his, his birthdays as one of the dates to commemorate his birthday. But every year it was like celebrating some different guy's birthday from the Noahide laws. I don't, it's complicated. But I think people can see tyranny when they um, see it. That's so Jimmy Carter. I can't, this is so blurry. It's not even clear. But Education and Sharing Day, 1978. And that's the, that's the name of the link. JewishWashington.com slash Education Day question mark light box data item. Okay, there it is. Washington White House by the President of the United States. This is in 2021, March 23, 2021. If the isolation, they talk about isolation and loss and that they need to work together. Hmm. Thanks, Trump. Okay, and also going back to that uh, Title 42, asylum seekers and migrants at the, at the Mexico um, border. So being from San Diego Union Tribune, it says 8.59 tonight. That's San Diego's time, but that's 11.59 tonight. They said Pennsylvania time. So anyhow, same thing, East Coast time, but the East Coast is not even affecting them. It's affect affecting the Southern um, borders. But anyhow, the time for us is 8.59, but for the East Coast, it's 11.59. So right before midnight. So I looked at 11.59. There's your 696, 1159, end of world. It's got to be, there's got to be some better explanations, I'm sure. And there's black crows. And if I get out my video that I've been watching or trying to edit and get through, it's, it's heavy. But um, 1159 is also black crows, which goes with the whole maypole thing. If you want to look at that video coming up. But look at that, the seven seals. That's also the Noahide laws. 1159. So the seven laws of Noah, Noah include prohibitions against worshiping idols. Oh, there goes all the Hollywood actors. Too bad for them. Cursing God. That's a good thing. Murder. That's, there goes all of our corporations that have murdered people and been part of this whole needle crafting thing along with the pharmaceutical companies, our government, everyone. Adultery and sexual immorality, there the politicians go too. Theft, eating flesh, oh yeah, because your hand's gonna get cut off if you steal anything. Eating flesh, torn from a living animal, there goes China as well as the obligation to establish courts of justice. Well, that would be good, okay. Now in that 10 things you need to know about the title um, 42, I saw the word tapestry in here along with the needles and haystacks, but I can't find it. I'm trying to find it. I can't find it now. It's a long ass article, but anyhow. So they mentioned the word tapestries. And remember when I was looking at the word genome and um, one of the anagrams was one gem and I was looking at gem.com and one of the their, um, what do they call it, affiliates, I guess, um, was Jane Street. I just happened to pick one. So there's Jane Street. And good old Jane here was looking at the, um, looks like a stock market thing plummeting, and she's smiling for some reason, but they're solving the puzzle of global markets. They're the research and, um, they're actually tech and research driven. 
I remember evolving since 2000. They're technologists. You know, I was looking at commodities and it brought me all the way over to SIM and that subscriber identification module for like everyone has an identification number. It could be your birth certificate or your social security number, but they're now they're going to put it on a card. So I looked up the word SIM cards also, and here's silvery, Victor Sylvester, SIM noun, SIM card, adjective. Um, isn't that funny? So welfare is on today's word, welfare. Opal spoken words, opal's a gem. So I looked up this Victor Sylvester guy too, but just to mention um, silvery, you know, Gates is part of the silver chair society. That's for a bunch of elites. I don't know if that's um, like a poetry society. No, is that the poetry society? Oh, that's weird. I can't find the silver chair society. I know I've seen it and I know I have it in my file somewhere, but what did come up when I looked at the um, archive.org was Aurora Flight Sciences. And remember when we first started this video, when we were talking about General Electric, it says the company operates segments such as aviation, healthcare, power, renewable energy, digital industry, additive manufacturing. I think we've pretty much covered everything and data analytics. Huh, and remember too, uh, the word American, you look at the anagram, it's in camera also because they're tracking, tracing you and everything you do. But I'll leave you this. It did mention silver in here, sir, silver bullet. Um, prepared by Justin McClellan, James Sisko, Brandon Suarez, Greg Keog, however you say that, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Aurora.aero, arrow. And this is titled the Geoengineering Cost Anal Analysis Harp Weather Terrorism Global Warming Scan New World Order Illuminati Freemasons. And look at they've covered a lot here. See, there's your M16. Hmm. It just doesn't stop. This is where we are right now. This is posted March 17th. 17, 1717 spelled out is NWO, New World Order, in 2019. Going back to the word commodity, sorry for skipping all over like I always do. Something you can trade on the market. And look at the word commode. Commode is now a colloquial synonym for a or flush a toilet. It's kind of what's happening to America right now. We're being flushed down a toilet. Do you feel like he's here everywhere you turn? Bill Gates loves trash. The actual Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Trust, which owns Gates' remaining Microsoft shares, owes another, owes, owns another 5.6, that's 11, BN billion stake in waste management. Waste management flush a toilet. Commodities. Look at the anagram for commode. Is chamber pot or chrome at BP? And I looked at BP, so most of us know that BP is oil industry. And look at their sun. They always have a sun. So I looked at BP.com. It's a British multinational oil and gas company headquartered in London, England. It is one of the oil and gas super majors and one of the world's largest companies measured by revenues and profits. And look at that Bernard Looney. Isn't that funny? Looney. And I looked at Bernard Looney's anagram and it's Darner Baloney. And Darner is one who darns. A needle used for darning. Needle as in needle craft as in CV19. I also looked at the word darners. Look, they have male and female too. Um, Darners, insects. It's from that family. I can't even pronounce it. Eschenidae or Ashnids, whatever. They're hawkers. Hawkers are darners. is a family of dragonflies. The family includes the largest dragonflies found in North America and Europe. 
I just thought that was interesting. Bernard, Lar uh, Bernard Looney, his um, Gematria anagrams are, I'm sorry, Gematria is also smacks a keyboard. But look at his numbers. 777, 888, and 148. Remember that? Oh, I'm interrupting myself. Remember 511 here? Ferris. Ferris is iron. That's F E. Remember when Trump wrote out Kofifi? Ferris? That's just a thought. Sorry. But back to Bernard. This is these are some of the um, numerology that went with 77 and 888. I don't know Rosalind Chapel, but my name is Silence. And Bye Bye Cabal Control, which is good unless they're just giving it over to the um, technocrats. And Transhuman Agenda. Socks are, are bad MK. And looking at the, about the socks comment, that um, smacks a keyboard. Is that when I decoded that? But the Bernard... Looney for 888 and 148 is also Donald J. Trump. Back to his name, Darner. And Darner, it says here, this is an interesting picture. Um, Boro are a class of Japanese textiles that have been mended and patched together. The term is derived from the Japanese term Boro Boro. It's almost like Ouroboros. Ouroboros, isn't it? Boro, like a patchwork. You could say the grid or the the web of oh, the web we weave, but that Bernard Bernard Looney is also Rockefeller the serpent. My name is Silence. I don't know who Rosalind is. Let's go look. Finished cross. Transhuman agenda. I think that's the one that we're seeing probably the most. The transhuman agenda. That comes after event two hundred one, where they doled out the needle craft. Now that's. 202. Look at also Bernard Looney's R. Elon Boneyard. That's kind of weird. Boneyard. He is digging, uh, Elon is digging that boring company where he's digging the heck out of the ground, just like the, what is it, the Vatican underneath has that huge, um, what do they call those, where all the bones are? Hmm. Oh, yeah, the necropolis. Remember all those bones that were found under the Vatican? That's sort of strange. So July 23rd, 2019. They're, they love the 19, and of course it came out before the whole covid Rovid thing. Thousands of bones discovered underground near Vatican Cemetery during search for teen. Yeah, just like the uh, little ball that they found, and that's how they found the... The under they found the underground was it the Dead Sea Scrolls, and talking about genes again the genome. But this is Vatican City. A genetics expert, there's your expert again, retained by the family of a girl who went missing in 1983, said Saturday that a cavernous underground, almost like carnivorous, almost like coronavirus, underground space near the Vatican Cemetery holds thousands of bones that appear to be from. Um, dozens. I think that's more than dozens of individuals. Yeah, that looks like more than dozens, I'd say. Yeah, here's another picture of what was found under the da da um, Vatican. Millions of skulls. So millions. So you go from, oh, they say it's false. It's human. Okay, they say it was false, but yet we're seeing that picture, but maybe that's CGI. Let's see. There's the cross. Bernard Looney's numbers are part of the finished cross. So those fact checkers said that they conducted a reverse search on each of the photo and they said the photos are from different chapels and displayed together with a false spin. But they're still part of the chapels. Isn't that interesting? It says those bones were part of in Portugal. Evora. Chapels, Portugal. I don't even know where that is. It says that the bones of 5,000 people are located in this chapel. And it says, um, we bones are here waiting for yours. Isn't that interesting? And it's, um, which was made clear by a poem written by Father Antonia 
Asenkayo, I don't even, Asenkayo, I don't know how to say that, found hanging on the wall. The poem reflects on the fleeting nature of life and asks people to ponder about death and those who have passed on. Try to remember though, people, life is for the living. So put your minds to work and live. So back to BP really quick, which um, <laughs> I got it, the word chamber part, pot, um, chrome at BP, the oil industry. And there's Bernard Looney, the CEO. Um, Stanford University graduate, school of business, even though he's from England, the UK, he came over and went to school at Stanford. And it looks like this oil company and stuff trying to get lower carbon. These are these people are part of the whole trying to run a pipeline through our middle America is what they're doing. And they're taking over people's lands and trying to come onto their lands and do surveying um, on their lands. And the eminent domain might be taking over. And I think they have to clear 700 miles of pipeline. So they're literally taking over Americans land. Um, and I don't know if it's BP, but it's the oil. It sounds like this. Hang on. Anyhow, he said that they've laid strategy to transform BP from an international oil company to an integrated energy company. And we're focusing on helping to solve the energy trilemma, trifecta, like a triangle, like the pyramid, the need for an energy system that can deliver energy that is secure, affordable, and lower carbon that's a huge lie, lower carbon, just like viruses are huge lies, while delivering long-term value for our shareholders. Only shareholders. They don't care about anyone else. Remember shareholders? They're like stockholders, like for cattle. Let's see. He's here to engage. Well, they're all over, and I haven't looked really deep into this, but this Idaho pipeline in southern Idaho runs west through Snake River Valley, Refiners in Utah, another pipeline crosses north part of the state. We're, I'll look deeper into this, but anyhow, there's they are trying to take land. That's all I can tell you. Oh, there's some, some crow. Just look at the words. You'll be able to kind of pick up some of the stuff that they're doing, the crow. And this is what my next video is about. See that crow, how it looks like ribbons? Well, I know I got way off track because I just started out with the what is an RNA genome, but I was really just interested in the genome. I never even got to that. Before I jump over to that ribbon thing, um, what is it? Well, genome, ego men, they're playing God, G-E-O men, like General Electric, the electrical companies, what they're going to be doing to us should be an omen. Me gone, which is what they're trying to do. Look at that G-E and then gnome, General Electric gnome. Gnome is one of 36 territorial divisions in ancient Egypt. Here's the Shriners logo. Looks like Egypt to me. Shriners, their home base is in Florida. There's the star. One last final one. There's a little e gnome for you. A gnome. You remember those little garden gnomes? How do you like that? Little garden gnome there. Talk about bones. Hey, Satan. Fun for the whole family. That's the un um, upcoming famine. That's what we're all going to look like. Here's mergers and acquisitions that I'm going through a video right now. I've been working on it. So see these, the ribbons, like the maypole. That's what started this, me looking at this. But it looks to me like it could be almost a cell tower in there. Um, but that's mergers and acquisitions, what they're doing to everyone's land right now, that BP or all the pipelines that they're trying to lay. They're coming in there and taking people's land in America. That's the eminent domain. They just literally do what they want. So I'm showing this in my next video. This video here really was just sort of getting a bunch of junk off my chest. So in my next video, I'm talking about the Tin Man because there's a lot in there. The Tin Man is in one zero also. And here's the Tin Man and all the numerology that I cover. So there's your reset. And I think that this is what they mean by Tin Man because COVID-19, that whole huge lie is 1010. And 10 is AI. 1 is A and 9 is I.
I mean E, sorry, I mean A. What am I doing? Wait, A, I. So <laughs> one is A and nine is I, and that's A, I. So COVID-19 is COVID AI, the Tin Man. I think it's Operation Z, and that's also 007 and Population. They work on the same numerology. And I don't know if, I don't think I post this. I'm not sure. Do, did I post this one yet about the Book of Life? Notice that flame. Remember those people at the border gathering their fast food from the Chicken King? The guy's flame in the back there? They tapestry everything. They weave everything together. That's part of this whole thing. They're a bunch of weavers. They're internet people. Okay. Gotta go, guys. Take care. Okay, one more thing I forgot to tell you. So, also, genome is also geomen. And remember when you look at like Silicon Valley, it's sly eco-villains, all those technocrats that are screwing up everything, the whole World Economic Forum and all that, those are technocrats taking over. So the geomen, this is also part of the whole geoengineering um, warming scan thing, the global warming, that whole huge lie psychological operation. And I'll leave this, I'll leave this um, document. October is 10 also in 2010. AR 10. Interesting how many ones and zeros they have in that. So there's your AI, which is 19 because A is 1 plus I is 9. I kind of screwed that up earlier. Sorry about that. And 1 plus 9 equals 10. And that's the Tin Man, or Tin Man, as in, remember Oz? So it's your AI man, which goes to being kind of like the, the whole transhuman stuff that they're doing. Anyhow, okay, guys, thank you. And they want to scare everyone. That's why they had the scarecrow also. So hold on to your hats.